Again, we thank you for joining us this Thursday morning. God bless you for being consistent with us. I know God is speaking something to us. And today is no exception. Today we are going to have a blessed, blessed discussion on this matter of purity. And I know something is getting to your system that is causing transformation. We want to thank you sincerely for joining us every morning. Make sure you do well to share this page and also repost it in your other groups and I know God is going to bless you. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for today. We ask of your Holy Spirit today. Bless us, dear Father. Lead us and guide us. Holy Spirit of God, we pray that we are not just going to have discussions, dear Father, but let the Holy Spirit breathe on us the breath of life that causes life to rise from within and transform our lives to the glory and honor of your name. We welcome your Holy Spirit again. Be with us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Um, today, we want to touch on something very, very uh, great. And then tomorrow we'll take time and pray and also, you know, uh, see areas where we need to make amendments. I think that we'll reserve it for tomorrow. But today, I want to talk about uh, the purity, not just of the body, but now the vessel that has been granted the opportunity to have a career, to do business, to have an occupation as a student, uh, the purity of your occupation, that many people have never understood that what God has given you, when the Bible says that uh, he, the gift of a man shall make room for him and bring him before men, not of obscure uh, nature, but of honor and noble state. One of the things that many people take for granted, and this is where actually we don't live to the full potential, is when we don't understand that the career that God has given you, the career that God has given you, in itself requires certain level of purity. We talked about consecration. Now this is in reference to your assignment. If God has given you the opportunity to serve as a doctor, it means he gave you, first of all, the brains to understand the human anatomy. Go through the schooling process, emerge uh, as an excellent student, for, for example, and God granted you the grace to become what you are today. If you're an accountant, if you're whatever thing that you're engaged in, if you're a, a, an engineer, a mechanic, whatever, um, uh, then coupled with that, some have been given the privilege to be either section heads, supervisors, managers, CEOs, directors. Uh, you, 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 are, you are a captain of some sort in where you are. Captain of some sort. With that reality alone, if the aspect of purity is not systemized in this individual, what happens is what God gave as a gift mad with impurity, for example, and we are not negative here, I'll, 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 I'll flip it so that you see the effect. When it is mad with impurity, it makes that career appear evil. It makes that a career, that career appear evil. For example, if you are a doctor or a maker, an engineer, whatever you are, and you are a very serious alcoholic, the people who will look at the discipline of being a medical doctor will associate that discipline with the drunkenness. The man or the woman or the child who looks at this engineer as a role model, who is now intoxicated with the drugs, for example, will now think and associate engineering as a career to be mad with addictions. If you, for example, are a businessman and God has granted you the grace to do business and you're recording supernormal profits, but you are a corrupt individual, now that business that you do will be considered by now the people whom you model life to 
they will consider it as a platform whereby you can't succeed without being corrupt. So when you tell someone you are a businessman, or rather you, you, you are this person who, who do tendering, for example, uh, they call it tenderpreneurs in Kenya. So if you are a tenderpreneur and someone has this mindset, this conditioning, that all tenderpreneurs are thieves, they are all corrupt, they are all underhand dealers, they are these underhand dealers. So the person who looks at you, who admires you, will associate the tenderpreneurship as an impure engagement. If you are a socialpreneur, for example, you're, you're, you're excelling in your social skills and they are paying. Someone whom you're modeling life to will look at what you do and associate it with evil based on what you do yourself to the body. Based on what you do to the body. Now, when you are an ambassador of Christ, you represent Christ in what you do. This is now where you, like I said, when I started on Monday, I said their ignorant talk of an individual who says, this is my body, I can do what I want to do. This is my life, I can do what I want to do. Do you see the kind of damage it does to someone who is vulnerably trying to seek a modeling and an inspiration from you who is now modeling dysfunction? So someone will look at the career that you hold and think, all the people in this career are all corrupt individuals. They are all drunkards. They are all drug addicts. They are all dealers. They are all, they succeed, but you don't see stock moving. You don't see anything happening. But all they talk about is just supernormal profits. Are you a wash wash kind of a guy? This is now where purity of the body has to be considered. But because of existing in a capitalistic environment whereby the rule of the game, sometimes it's the willing buyer, willing seller, no regulation. It is sometimes the level of indulgence is to the degree of what conditioning you have. If you are conditioned to be a model of Christ, if you are conditioned to be a model of Christ, there are things now that, like I said yesterday, the consecration that you carry will not allow you to indulge. Not because it is, sometimes all things are permissible, but the consecration will tell you not all things are beneficial. As and when you get to that level, you are no longer discussing between good and evil. You are now discussing between the good and better. Only purity can now show you this. The purity of your calling, I mean career, the purity of your calling, the purity of your assignment, the purity of your business, because if you don't, in fact, many people who are of alternative faiths understand this logic more. So they have made their businesses, for example, as an altar to their God. Any person of an alternative faith if you go to their shops, to their premises, to their business, even to their offices, you will find that this person has got a certain de deity that they subject their career to. A certain deity that they subject their career, their business to. So either they will perform certain rituals where they open their business, or they will come early to the office and perform certain rituals, or during the day they will observe different uh, times of, you know, worship and prayer. But many of us Christians, and especially we the Pentecostal Christians, we are guilty of violating this principle of not looking at your business as an altar for Jehovah, not looking at your calling and your career as an altar for Jehovah, not looking at your career, for example, as a teacher, as an assignment sent by God to affect the cosmos that God has allowed gain, you gain access to. The purity of your discipline with regard to your career, business, as and when you start looking at it from that angle, it can degenerate to become a burden. And especially when it is not returning anything. 
sometimes we consider the profitability of the career to be more rewarding to this body in terms of sensuality, but we don't consider it to be a reward to the body of Christ by how you are going to act and behave as a kingdom champion advocating advocating the values of Christianity and even extending the favors even to the household of faith. It shows when we see people sleep hungry within our community, within our ecosystem, yet you have got food to spare and you are throwing it. Yet God has granted you access to abundance more than enough that you may be a blessing. Up until you see your career as an altar for God, you will keep coming to church and you will keep dancing yourself around, but you will never be impactful. You will never be impactful. God is calling us to a life of impacting generations. I am transforming my generation, we say, and so help me God. How will God help you transform your generation if you haven't looked at your career to be a transformational altar for Jehovah to use? If you haven't seen that what you do as an occupation is actually uh, an altar for God to transform generations. We all want to see transformation, but we don't want to subject ourselves as instruments of transformation. So we look at ourselves as targets of transformation as opposed to looking at ourselves as agents of transformation. So with your gift, with your gift, the, the way your gift has been designed, it is designed to be a blessing to you by providing for your livelihood. But it is also designed to be a blessing to the people who are looking up to you or your subjects or the people who, whom, uh, who, who depend on you, for example. But many a times we don't want to look at the purity of our careers. No wonder we treat our career as a transactional tool, only beneficial to you and not beneficial to anyone else. So you keep talking about you need to, you need to work hard, you need to, you need to. What is it that you have that was not given to you? Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God. Oh, businessman, God has granted you that grace. Oh, businessman, God has granted you that grace. Be a blessing to the body. That is now the purity of your business. Be a blessing to many others. Don't allow the neighbor's child to be chased from school when you have capacity and reserves. When you have capacity and reserves, educate as many as you can. Because if we are going to transform generations, it's not going to happen on handouts. It will happen on investing in the people. And especially where you see value, invest. Where you see value, invest. Where you see potential, invest. Career man, don't sit in just that big office. That big office is meant to help others access opportunities not for self-preservation and self-aggrandizement. No, it is meant to be a blessing to many others. You can sit and hear there are opportunities for people to get jobs, and the only thing you think about are your relatives. Now you are causing that your career to be impure before the sight of God. You are causing it to be impure. I don't care what you believe about this, that is the truth. You are causing impurity to get into that career. How else will you confirm that nepotism is not a reality? How then, then will you confirm that tribalism is not a reality? How then will you confirm that uh, biasness, biasness is not a reality? How will you confirm? When it has to do with the purity of your assignment, hold it highly, esteem it highly. Because the more God lifts you, it is to the degree to which you lift others. If you see me go, you shall have, Elijah tells Elisha. If you see me go, you shall have. 
And so that principle applies to everyone who desires to go up. If you desire that God will scale your life up, make sure you're in the business of scaling other people's lives up. That's the purity of your assignment. How do I apply this? In small ways that God enables you to. Are you aware, if you close your eyes today and ask God, Lord, bring me one needy person, by the close of business today, someone will be knocking or calling or someone will be seconded to you. But because of self-centeredness and selfishness, the level of him, because what causes impurity to the body is self-centeredness and selfishness, which in itself ultimately is pride. And whenever you see pride anywhere, don't expect magic, expect a fall. Anytime you see pride, it is an announcement that falling is coming. That is why a dry leaf, when it falls off from a tree, when a dry leaf is falling off from a tree, it is an, 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 an announcement to the green leaf that you're on your way coming. So the purity of our calling, the purity of our career, the purity of our businesses, the purity of our occupation is to the degree to which it is useful to God as an altar for being a blessing to transform generations. This is not a so common a discussion. This is not a so common a discussion. But I want to help us understand, we are called to be transformers. We are called to be impactful. We are called to be generational transformers. transformers. If we don't live up to that expectation, what happens is you will be a mutation, a mutant that only can, you'll be like a shrub. Potentially, you're supposed to grow to become a big tree, but you grow to become a shrub. So what happens is you don't live up to the full potential and capacity to which God expected you. That is why in the body of Christ, generosity should be a reality. That is why it is one of our values as DCIU. Generosity. Generosity. Do you think of others more highly than yourself? Because... If you want to deal, if you want to deal with covetousness, jealousy, if you want to deal with unforgiveness, bitterness, if you want to deal with some of these things, learn to be generous. Just learn to be generous. Learn to be generous. As and when you become generous, you will now be a dispenser of love. You will be a huge dispenser of love. But many people have never understood this. That's why now they live as though the world revolves around them. And some of them sometimes can even say, I will not do it. Let me see what you'll do. Before long, you can get sick. Corona can sweep you out, man. And what actually you're trying to conserve will be utilized in a hospital bill. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that is what you reap. And it is not where, it is what you saw. I want to believe that God is saying something to us today and is releasing the kind of wisdom that will cause us to walk in purity of our calling, of our career, of our occupation, of anything that we are engaged in. As a student, learn to make sure that whatever you are studying, there is a certain level of consecration to it. And then this is what you're telling God. Lord, see how you have given me this career. Use it for your glory. You have a talent. You are cooking. Use it for your glory. You play football. Use it for your glory. You are an athlete. Use it for your glory. This is what now God will do. He will send angels to pick the simple and then now will announce you in the places where decisions are made. This is now the technology of promotion. When you are, allow God to carry your career, you'll tell God, this is your career. Use it for your glory. Now, God will carry that name, put it in a place where decisions are made, and you will be so shocked that consistently your name will be mentioned where it really matters. Promotion will be like this, always coming your way.
Your business will be mentioned. No, don't give that company. Give it to that company. Consistently, your, the name of your business will be mentioned because of the level of consecration of that business. Tithe from the business. Give a tithe of the profit of that business. Alternative faiths understand this technology. We Christians are the ones who hardly give tithes from our businesses. We hardly do. We only give an offering. But we don't actually take a time to give tithe from our profits in the business. In the alterna other alternative faith, this is what they do. They'll actually call the priest to come and calculate the 10% of all your income. Which Christian will do that? That you're calling a pastor, come and calculate, and then you go with that in cash. Go with it. Take it to the church. Which Christian will do that? I can tell you, there are alternative faiths. They, are, they go to business. They call them. The priests come and do the calculation. The 10%, go with it. The rest now is what they transact with. May God help us. May God help us. Father, we thank you. And we ask, dear Father, consistently help us to be faithful in the purity of our career, our business, our calling, in the purity of the talents that you've given us. Bless each and every one of us today in Jesus' name. See you tomorrow for the final installation. Let's conclude together. God bless you.